Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He states, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى That most certainly with difficulty there is ease, certainly with difficulty there is ease. This repetition has to have purpose because it is stated by Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing the point that no difficulty in the life of a believer comes without ease. And that same difficulty will also be accompanied by other types of ease. Every single time a believer experiences difficulty, there is not one ease, there is not one relief, but there are multiple reliefs, multiple levels of ease and blessings that come from Allah. Some of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they said, if the difficulty went and hid inside of a mountain, the ease would go in there and force the difficulty out from there. That the ease is inevitable. The Prophet ﷺ, after the passing of his wife Khadija and the passing of his uncle Abu Talib, and the situation in Mecca had become dire. Persecution was around every corner. The Prophet ﷺ decided to explore other areas outside of Mecca. And so he took a journey, a 10 day long journey to the city of Ta'if. It took about two to three days for him to walk there. When he arrived there in Ta'if, he went to the leadership of Ta'if and said to them, I have a message, give it a chance. And they all rejected him. When they all turned him away, the Prophet ﷺ said, I'm going to leave Ta'if. I will not impose myself upon you. Allow me to leave quietly and peacefully. But they unfortunately decided to not afford him that opportunity. What did they do? They summoned together Together all the troublemakers in town and they set them upon the Prophet ﷺ. and they all gathered stones and rocks and they lined up on both sides of the road and as the Prophet ﷺ approached they all started throwing rocks at him and they were aiming for his feet because they didn't want to kill him but they wanted to injure him and make it painful and they did it all the way from the boundary of the city of Ta'if to a place called Qadnul Manazil or Qadnul Tha'alib which is three miles away. For three miles, dozens and dozens of people threw rocks at him. They became tired of throwing rocks. And so they stopped and they walked away. They left, they went back to Ta'if. When they finally left, the Prophet ﷺ, he walked over to a tree. He sat down in the shade of the tree and he assessed the damage. And his clothes were dirty from all the rocks. And the lower that he looked, he started to see stains of blood through his clothes until he got to his feet. The Prophet ﷺ used to wear sandals. So the top of his foot was exposed. And they had thrown so many rocks that the skin off the top of his feet had come right off. It was just an open wound instead of a foot. He had bled so much from his feet that the blood had gathered and dried up and crusted in his sandals to the point where he couldn't even remove his sandals. Zayd had to rip the sandals off of his feet. And as he sat there, bloodied, bruised, beaten, the Prophet ﷺ did what Allah teaches us to do in the Qur'an. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ That when you are done with the task, Stand back up and turn to your Lord, meaning supplicate to your Lord and your Master Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ while sitting under that shade of the tree, his blood spilt on the ground. He raised his hands up and he prayed to Allah. Oh Allah, I complain to you of my own weakness. And I complain to you of my lack of resourcefulness. And I complain to you that I did not command more respect in the eyes of these people. O oh, most merciful of all those capable of showing mercy. You are the Lord and the master, the caretaker, the provider of the weak, the downtrodden, the oppressed, and you are my Lord. O oh Allah, even if you do turn me over to my enemy or to some ruthless animal that would violate me, that would abuse me, that would oppress me. But as long as you, O oh Allah, are not upset with me, let them have their way with me. As long as you are pleased with me, I don't care what they do. But I do ask for your protection because it is better. I take refuge, I ask for protection in the light of your face that dispels all the darkness in this world. And you can fix anything in this life and in the next life that your wrath and your anger would ever descend upon me, or that you would ever unleash your wrath upon me. 
I will continue to serve you until you are pleased with me. And there is no ability to do good. There is no strength to resist evil except and only if it comes from you. He turns to Allah in such a difficulty. We talked about ease and not just one ease, but multiple layers of ease. What happens? Some of his most staunchest enemies in Mecca, they had a garden in that area. They see the condition of the Prophet ﷺ. They end up feeling bad and they send a servant, bring them into the garden and provide them refuge and water and food and rest. Number one. Number two, the Prophet ﷺ at this point, he has lost consciousness. When he wakes up, the servant is sitting in front of him. And when he serves him something, the Prophet ﷺ says, Bismillah. The servant is curious. He says, what did you just say? And why did you say that? Your people do not talk like that. He said, I am the messenger of God. Who are you? He says, my name is Adas. I am from Nainawa. He says, do you know Yunus ibn Matta, the Prophet? He says, of course, he was a great man and he was from our town. The Prophet ﷺ said, he is my brother. How can he be your brother? He was in ancient times. The Prophet ﷺ says, he was a prophet of Allah and I am the messenger of Allah. The Christian man, Adas, becomes Muslim on the spot. Then the Prophet ﷺ, after he's recuperated, he journeys back to Mecca. On his way to Mecca, they stop and they camp at a place at night. The Prophet ﷺ wakes up in the night and prays. And he's reciting the Qur'an in his night prayer. When the morning time comes, the angel Jibreel comes to him. The verses of the Qur'an are revealed to him. وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا أَنْصِتُوا فَلَمَّا قُضِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ مُنْذِرِينَ قَالُوا يَا قَوْمَنَا أَجِيبُوا دَاعِيَ اللَّهِ وَآمِنُوا بِهِ Last night, unbeknownst to you, you were reading the Qur'an, but there was a group of jinn who were passing by here. And when they came by you, they heard the Qur'an. And they stopped and they said, shh, quiet, quiet, listen. And when you were done reciting the Qur'an, they went back to their people and they told them about what they had heard. And they said, answer the call from God and believe in this. And all of them became Muslim. The fourth is, the Prophet ﷺ, he's about to arrive in Mecca. Some of the people from Ta'if have leaked the information to the Meccans that the Prophet ﷺ came to Ta'if to conspire against Mecca. So they decided to try him for treason. So the Prophet ﷺ was told, do not enter Mecca because they will try to capture you and paint you as a traitor. So he took refuge in the cave of Hira for a few days. And one of the leaders of the Quraysh, who was not Muslim and never became Muslim, he had seven sons. He went with his seven sons, all of them armed with their armor and their swords. And they went outside of Mecca and they escorted the Prophet ﷺ into Mecca. And they took him and he did tawaf. And they went and they stood in front of the leadership of Mecca. And they said, he is under our protection. You mess with him, you mess with us. Allah is providing him protection by his enemy against his enemy. And then the fifth ease, shortly thereafter, one fateful night, blessed night, the Prophet ﷺ is lying near the Kaaba and he's asked to go to his home. And from there, the Prophet ﷺ is taken on the most miraculous journey that any human being has ever taken. The journey of Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj, where in one night, he goes from Mecca to Jerusalem to Masjid Aqsa. And then from there, he's taken above the seven heavens. And he goes to where no creation has ever gone before. And he prostrates, he does sujood in the presence of Allah himself. And he is given the gift of the prayer. All of these eases, all of these blessings followed after that difficulty. So what we need to remember, know it for a fact that any time we face difficulty, there is ease and not just one, but there are multiple levels of ease coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is his promise to us in the Quran. 